know, look, this is Len from LPR Toolmakers. I'm just going to go through some very fundamentals about using tungsten carbide tip tool holders and basically any holder on a lathe. Now, it's the most important thing before you start is to make sure that all your gibs and that are all tight. So you pull your, your, your headstock, your um, quick change tool post or your four-way tool post this way, that way, that way or up. If you feel any give whatsoever, you need to tighten it up because carbide needs to be very rigid when it works. Okay, so now I've got a bit of high tensile steel here. It's actually a little chuck arbor. It's quite hard. I'm going to put that up into here. And the next very, very main thing, using tungsten carbide or, or just high speed steel cutting tools, is that you must have your lathe tips right on your centre height. Not a little bit up, not a little bit down, it's got to be smack on. And the most simple way to do that is to get your insert. We've got carbide here. I'm going to turn the machine on now and what we're going to do is we're going to take a cut to the centre of that spigot. Right now, if that spigot is spot on, this one here is, if it's down, or up, you adjust until it's smack on. Don't worry about the tail stock. This is where it all comes out from your headstock. So we'll turn this on. And we'll take a cut. Right. Okay, that is spot on centre height. Okay, so I'm happy now. Alright, so it's nice and rigid. The insert is on the centre height, I'm ready to take the cut, right, so we'll turn the machine off. Now, I've got three different types of steels here, the high tensile steel, so this is, if it cuts high tensile, it's going to cut mild steel, alright. See the finish, smack bang on. Now, this piece here is very tough steel, it's actually a pull piston in a hydraulic unit. It's very, it's like ball bearing steel, it's bloody hard, but it's not hardened steel, all right, it's more like tool steel. Put a bit of that up. Now, when I use tungsten carbide on a lathe for doing small jobs, I don't use coolant at all, right? On steels, note that, steels. Other non-ferrous metals, you may have to, all right? So, turn the machine on. Get the right red with carbide, you can really give it a red. This way I might take it up a bit more, alright? I'll just put it on automatic feed. And that's just taking a nice beautiful cut because it's right on the centre height. It's a tough steel, no, yes, the chips are coming at you. But have a look at that, how easy that cuts. It cuts beautiful, right? They're all our own inserts. I import these from America. Alright, so now the next thing. Okay, we're just going to put up now, I'm going to put up another bit of steel, which is actually not steel, it's a bit of aluminium, right? Now, when you're using aluminium, it's different. Aluminium, right, is not the best thing to use for tungsten carbide unless you use a special profile cutter or you use it with cutting steel. Can I get that in there? We'll see if we can get it in there or not. If I can't get it in there, I can't show you. That'd be right. And we'll leave that little bit away for a sec. But anyhow, when you're using aluminium, what can happen is that you'll get the end of your tip here. All right. I'll show you another one. By right, the end of the tip, you'll get what they call tool buildup. And if you get a little bit of tool buildup on there, on aluminium or brass, what it causes then, instead of cutting, it starts to actually scrape and pull. And eventually that tip will break off. So a lot of you people to the trade will tend to blame the insert and not using the right type of insert or the right type of fluid. Now, when I use aluminium or brass, I probably actually prefer, if you're going to use it on a CNC machine or a lathe, always put a little bit of tap magic on the end of the tip, which I did have somewhere. somewhere. Where's me tap magic? That'll be right, I had it sitting right there. Oh, right, so bit of tap magic, you just put it on the end of your tip, you don't need to put it on your job. Now what that does, it helps to prevent tool build up, right? So when I say help, it still will happen, you have to keep your eye on it. When you see it just starting to happen, 
you go and get a little scriber or a little rule and just flick it off. Don't put your hand on there because you might cut your bloody hand off. All right, now I do have a bit of brass. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you what happens with brass. The same thing again. All right, this is a nice piece of brass. Not really. You'll cut brass with, with, with these, but it's the same thing. You don't, you don't put coolant on it, but you will use it with a little bit of tap magic, right? So we know we're on the centre height. We'll take another quick cut just to prove it. With brass, it's basically self-lubricating, all right? So you don't need to put coolant on there. You can to keep the, the uh, rubbish down, but place a little bit of tap magic on the tip to stop the tool build up. And then take it in and give it a cut. Watch the tool build up. It seems to be all right. But you need to take, keep your eye on it to make sure that you're not getting tool build up on it because that's what will happen. It will build up on the tip there. A lot of people actually use high speed steel. You can use, use uh, tungsten carbide, bring your speed up a little bit, right? Or it depends on your machine. Each machine's different. So you can, depending on the diameter, the bigger the diameter, slower the speed, smaller the diameter, faster the speed. But basically, as I'm just showing you, so it's just very fundamental important things about using tungsten carbide. Thanks and uh, have a look at this clip and I hope it helped you.